everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be doing a autumn leaf pastel painting tutorial on book pages. Now just a little disclaimer right off the bat. If you don't want to do this tutorial on book pages, you don't want to be bothered with it, but you'd still like to do autumn leaves, you can absolutely do this on whatever pastel paper that you have or you prefer. Um, for beginners, I really recommend the Canson Mitants, I think is a good beginner pastel paper. And also the Strathmore 400 series pastel paper I think is very, very good for a finer surface that still allows for a couple layers for beginners. So those are my recommendations there. But I thought it really would be fun and adds to the decorative effect if we use book pages. So let me show you before we get started just how I prepped these pages for pastel. So the very first thing that I did was I actually, because the pages are very, very thin, I've got an old dusty book here. I went ahead and I actually glued several of the pages together um, using some Liquitex matte gel. And uh, this is not just a good gel acrylic medium, but it's also an archival safe collage adhesive. So that's why I used that. If you're not worried about archivalness and you're just painting for your own enjoyment, you can use Elmer's glue, that's fine too. Um, I pressed the pages together. I set something heavy on top of the book after I had, you know, I had done about two or three pages together. I think works out very, very well. And then um, I removed the pages from the book and I taped them down on all four edges and I primed the paper with golden pastel ground. Now this is my favorite. I really really like this for um, applying a little bit of grit to the paper for a pastel painting. Alternatively, if you don't have that, if you have the Golden Fine Pumice Gel, that will work okay too, but it doesn't have as much bite to it. It's a, it's much smoother, and um, I found that the pastel was dustier on it and didn't accept as many layers, very unfortunately. And then the last thing that you could use is Liquitex Clear Gesso, which is what I used to prime the paper for this acrylic painting tutorial that I've already completed, and I will leave this linked up in the description box as well as the eye cards down below in case you guys were interested in learning how to paint this little leaf on book pages in acrylic. Um, now I would do one very very fine smooth thin coat of this if you're going to be using it and I do recommend the Liquitex Clear Gesso as a pastel ground. I think it works okay um, and if you wanted to follow along with multiples of these tutorials, like you wanted to do some of the acrylic painting tutorials on book pages that I have coming up and some of the pastel painting tutorials as well, um, but you could only afford one of these products, get the clear gesso because you can do both with it. But I do find the pastel ground to be preferable. So with all of that out of the way, let me go ahead and introduce the materials. So here I have um, a couple of Rembrandt pastels. I've got a yellow, this green is actually a darker variation of that yellow, a couple of oranges, one's like a pumpkin spice color, um, a deeper more scarlet orange, some cooler red and burgundy options, a deep kind of um, magenta and a deep purple. So not too many pastels there. If you didn't want to use uh, Rembrandt, if you had just those student grade pastels, those are fine as well. And I actually have two pastel pencils here, a yellow and a dark red. This is from the brand Faber-Castell. They are light, fast, good quality, but you know, if you don't have these or if you have another brand or even just color pencils, you could use those too in a pinch, okay? So don't get bogged down with the materials. I will leave all the materials listed in the description box as always. Um, I also have here one of the color shapers tools. I get questions about these a lot, so I will leave this linked up in the description box as well. So let's get right on into it and jump right in. I'm going to start with this first leaf. And I'm actually going to start off with this really nice kind of scarlet shade. Now the reason that I chose my Rembrandts for today instead of, you know, Schmincke or Mount Vision or some other uh, softer brand is because I'm very aware that uh, th I've made this pretty small scale and I want to have a harder 
medium soft pastel so I can really get in and get some control. You can see that while this pastel ground is transparent, it's meaning I can see all the text beneath it, um, it is providing some nice bite, some nice grit here for me to apply the pastel. Let's see, where else do I want that? It's giving me nice control. I've sketched on just a couple autumn leaves with some graphite. Now I find that the slightly harder kind of medium soft pastels like Rembrandt are just a little bit transparent. And I kind of, I think I kind of like that effect for on the book page. Put a little of it there. Let's put a little bit of this here. In case you're wondering what book this is that I'm currently working on, this is actually Pride and Prejudice, a very old copy. Please don't go out and buy brand new books for this. If you, most of us have an old, dusty, dingy book somewhere in their house. I'm going to take that um, kind of darker, cooler red option. Also, Amazon has a lot of used books that you can get super cheap. I just want to put a little of that in there. You can see. Now, if you don't prime the page first, if you're working on book pages, you really want to prime that page first because otherwise, uh, it's just the pastel is not going to stick very well. It's just going to slide right off. Sometimes, like uh, thrift stores, consignment shops. I'm pretty certain, though, most of us probably have some old dusty dingy books somewhere. That one is like probably 12 years old. The one I'm working on now, it's a mass paperback. I actually really love Pride and Prejudice, by the way. I am going to take um, my medium yellow shade here. I'm just going to put some of that in down the center. Kind of as if I'm making a line of that yellow all the way to the different points. For this leaf. I love the Rembrandt pastels you guys because see the control that I can really get with them. It's a nice thing. It really is. Not too much dust either and definitely not too much dust on this pastel ground. I approve of this product you guys. I really do. Just putting that out there. Look how I can come right over. That's nice. That's nice. I'm trying not to push too hard for that initial layer. I've got this more um, yellow orange. It reminds me of a monarch butterfly. Put some of that in. It's funny because um, I really love uh, the movie Pride and Prejudice and the book particularly the audiobook, for whatever reason, I purchased it, the audiobook, I mean, around the time of Hurricane Sandy, which would have been 2013, I do believe. And ever since then, whenever I have a, a big storm or with a power outage, which we had one last night here in New Jersey, and it is hurricane season now. I'm sorry, guys, I just had a, a telephone call right in the middle of that. So, what was I saying? Yes, so coming in here with this like light yellow to orange, as I was saying, um, for whatever reason, ever since Hurricane Sandy, whenever I have like a, a hurricane or a big storm and I have a power outage for a couple days, I always listen to the audiobook of Pride and Prejudice. It's become like my tradition. <laughs> I know that was such a fascinating story, you guys. That was like pulse pounding. You guys had to know the conclusion of that. So I got that yellow again. I'm just gonna come in with a little more of that and kind of making like a star pattern if you will sort of like a starburst effect with the yellow kind of connecting to all the points there. And I'm gonna take this 
sort of, I'm calling it pumpkin spice. I think it's just the darker version of this Rembrandt orange color. Again, whatever you have. If you have raw sienna or something similar to this in your pastel box, just use this, like a saddle brown kind of color. I'm gonna come into the edges here a little bit and that'll mix in with my orange to get a more muted variation of the color there. Now I'm starting to get just a little bit more dust, but I'm really not worrying too much about it. Just kind of doing my thing. Put a little in here. There we are. Not too much of that, because I still want the leaf to look pretty fresh. What else would I like to add in there? How about just a little bit of this red, but not too much because I want... I want the other leaf to be more red heavy. And uh, so I want I want each of these leaves to have their own kind of distinctly different and unique personalities. So I think these make excellent pieces of fall decor, cute little gifts and things. You could put this on some cardstock and maybe do a gift um, or like a greeting card or something of that nature if you wanted to. Let's go back to that deeper orange and kind of get a little more of that coming out. We're going to do a lot of fall tutorials this year. I love autumn and I really want to welcome it in and celebrate it. Um, with my art. I've got this green, which is really just the darker variation of the yellow. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of that in. Not too much. As like I said in my Inktense fall leaf tutorial, this isn't the color that you came here to see. Like, it, nobody wants green leaves in autumn. You know, but you would see a little of it. So I'm gonna put a little in, especially toward the base of the leaf. Um. Maybe a little right here because it'll mix and neutralize out to make a halfway decent natural color. Alright, now I've got my color shaper tool. I'm going to come in and start blending gently with that. See how the shape of the tool, I have the, the flat chisel here. They also have a round one that I have. But when I'm getting into those edges, those corners, those sharp corners that make a, a red maple leaf so distinct, going in on the side so that I can really maintain that point. These tools are worth the investment. They really, really are. I'm not blowing that dust at all. Certainly not. I'm going to wipe the brush. Yeah, okay. I'm going to wipe the tool off. Now I'm sort of smearing the color, if you will, now. I'm not doing circular motions like I might ordinarily do. I'm kind of like doing streaks, kind of. I'm intentionally like stroking the paint kind of toward the center to create that almost starburst effect. So you can really, depending on how you like to blend something out, you can get a very different look. And I don't want to over blend this actually. I know a lot of the time I tend to do a lot of blending, but this is not one of those times I want a more painterly look. So I'm actually going to leave that be for the moment. There is quite a bit of dust. I'm going to tap that off before I come work back on it again in a minute. But I'm going to move down here to this leaf now. Um, and no, I haven't done the stem yet, but we're not worrying about that right now. <laughs> so for this leaf, like I said earlier, I want this one to be more distinctly red. So I've got the darkest, this is like the extra dark permanent red deep or something like that. Um, but any kind of cool, deep red that you have is going to work fine. So you don't have to have the exact color I have. But you can see these more medium soft pastels, like those Faber-Castell ones. If you have these, they're going to work good for this. They are that nice kind of slightly firmer texture that allows for more detail. So that's why I really like Rembrandt pastels. And of course, they're light, fast, and decent quality. 
they are really good quality actually I should say now here's a little tip for you too if you're having a hard time like there's a point here to this leaf this is too fat to get right into that point I could either use my pastel pencil the dark red and come in and get that point in or if you don't have that but you have a, a pointy shaper tool or blending tool bring the color you know as close to that point as you possibly can like that and then using the tool manipulate the color outward into that point see how I just did that so that's another way you can just push the pigment and manipulate it into that little point using that color shaper tool so that's another really great use for that tool and another way that you can get some sharper corners just going in as gentle as I can now up there I want to use my little pencil to get in there is that it's about the right color yeah I really like this uh, golden pastel ground I'm gonna have to do a review on it on the channel soon so subscribe so you won't miss that and if you haven't already consider subscribing anyway because my, my channel is full of tutorials for beginners advanced tutorials I mean I've got something for everyone pastel acrylic watercolor um, product reviews it's something for everyone and hit that notification bell give me a thumbs up and leave me some comments because it helps out more than you might think it really does all right into that darker shade I think I want to take a little of this like magenta color in some places yeah I want to take a little bit of that magenta right in there just because I think it's a fun little color surprise there not all over and this is like a very dark purple I might take some of that toward the very very tips not all the places but maybe this one and this one you really can get some decent lines with Rembrandt well done Rembrandt seriously well done I've got this red here which is a step down as you can see it's just a step down in color from the last one that we had see that and I'm going to use that for the point of that part of the leaf. Just like that. Reinforce a little bit more of that with that darker kind of deep red there. Okay. Now I'm going to take that yellow color. I want some of that yellow mostly focusing it on this side when that warm yellow overlaps with the red you you'll get a nice kind of fiery orangey color where it overlaps which I think is nice and then we'll go ahead and we'll take some of this like pumpkin spice kind of color I'm suddenly feeling the urge to do a review on Rembrandt soft pastels um, as well as a review on this pastel ground 
but definitely on these pastels. And then if you guys were interested also, I've got the yellow now going overlapping some of that pumpkin spice. Let me know if you'd be interested in a comparison video, like comparing the Schmincke Super Soft Pastels with like a Rembrandt, more medium soft, so that you guys could see the differences and why you might choose one um, over another. So I'm gonna take and kind of blend that first layer out. Now for this one, I am doing some more of those like circular buffing motions. Like so. In this section here, I might even take my finger and really kind of work that in there. Now, I'm cleaning the tool off before I go up into these gorgeous reds and burgundies and kind of purpley colors because otherwise, you know, that yellow is a near complement and you're going to be sorry because you'll really mute the colors badly and you won't be able to... If you bring that yellow color up, you're gonna you're gonna muddy the waters, and you you won't be able to fix that, unfortunately, too nicely. So we want to keep the red up there pure, and I can already see here where I want to take more of that warm red shade, more of that kind of magenta shade in a few places. And then come in with this yellow once more. Um, sort of reinforce some of that yellow. I, I want these shades to blend and mix a bit though. I don't really want it to be like pure yellow. And I'm going to take some of that magenta right here even, I think. Yeah. I've kind of a cleaned off the tool a little bit and I'm gently blending. You can see the grit, the texture of that sand that we've applied a little bit. All right, I have a decent amount of dust, so I want to tap it off into the trash can. If you get smears or smudges or fingerprints on the paper, don't stress out. As long as you've primed it with either the pastel ground or the clear gesso, you can clean it right off and I'll show you how. So don't distress about that. All right, so I have tapped that off into the trash can. I'm just gonna come in and use my pastel pencil to sharpen up any edges. They don't have to be perfect. Absolutely not. You don't have to have perfect edges, but I just want to sharpen it up as much as possible. Do the same thing on this leaf. You know, I do want some definition. and It doesn't have to be everywhere, but, you know, I still want overall a pretty painterly look. I think I'm going to come in with a little bit of this green shade. And, you know, this is just that, um... That darker version of the yellow, I might put a little of that in um, on this one just for harmony because I want to make sure that we um, maintain some harmony kind of between the two. Like I want to make sure we're using the same colors pretty much in both of them. The only color I did not use in this leaf that I used in the other one was that orange, and I used a magenta in this one that I didn't use in that one yet. So let's go ahead and work on the stems. For this stem, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use some of that magenta, just cause I think it's fun, you know? As artists, we are not shackled to a reference photo or, you know, the colors we see in reality. 
Like we can have fun with this. This can be anything we want it to be. A little bit of that green toward the end. I want to play with color. This is where a pastel pencil really comes in handy to get you a nice look. And I think I'll kind of have some of it trail off there. And then, let me see, what do I want to do with this one? Hmm. I think I'll take actually some of that orange to start. And then I'll come in and I'll, I'll use the red. How about that? We'll use the red down this stem. And we'll have, at toward the end, we'll have some of that yellow. And we'll have it trail off again into the green like we did on the other stem. And let's use the, the green toward the base of the stem so it all kind of comes together. And I'll use my little shaper tool to blend. And I'm not shackled to, you know, a reference photo. I'm an artist. I want to paint it the way I see it. And I encourage you to do the same. Paint things the way you see it. You know, have fun. You do you. I'm going to put a tiny bit more of this magenta in, just for fun there. And let's see, a little bit more of the yellow. Let's see, a little more of the yellow. There we go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put, again, I want a little more magenta right in here, because I think that's fun. Um, do I want another layer up here? I don't know. Let's put, let's put a little more maybe of that orange. If we need it. Hmm. A little more yellow. Let's do that. Let's do a little more yellow. And more of that kind of yellowy orange to blend. Now, if you've pushed too hard on your first layer, whatever paper you're using, or if you're using, I mean, this sanded surface, I think, can really take it, but um, you might not be able to get it to stick as well. So, just a little warning for you there. I want to kind of really push now and get some real nice yellow punch. See that? Hmm. I feel like I need some more of this like pumpkin spice color in here maybe. Maybe I need more of that. I don't know. I'm add a little more of that in toward the ends. Do I want more of that uh that red. Maybe I want a little more red in there. Let's put some more of that in. There we are. I'm just going to keep kind of playing around with it until I'm absolutely happy with it. And you can spray some pastel fixative if you want over the top of this. Come in with a little more of that darker orange. And uh, 
little bit of that kind of pumpkin spice shade mixed in. So some of that. And then blend some of that out. But I'm using a different technique with the blending on this leaf. I'm doing more swipes, sorta, than what I did here, which was more of a smooth buff, kind of like a circular motion. And that's because I want this leaf to have that very painterly kind of look, and I want it to have that starburst sort of effect coming from the center. I'm going to take a little bit more of that like dark cranberry color because I really want to make sure I don't lose, I would call it more of a burgundy rather, excuse me, I don't want to lose the, um, the values. You know, I want to make sure I have a good range of total, total values in my work. That's important. Maybe I should... No, I'm not going to put any there. I'm going to put a little bit of that red right... This is like the more bright red. And let's put a little bit of the bright red on the corner there. Cleaning the brush off and I'm just going to kind of blend that in softly. And some pastel artists don't like blending at all. And that's fine. If you if you don't like blending, don't don't do a lot of blending. Try it a couple ways. I always say that in my beginner tutorials especially. Try it a few ways, you know. But I like having a variation. Uh, of marks in my work. All right, so I tapped that off into the trash can. I sprayed a layer of fixative, uh, workable fixative that is. This is the Spectra Fix Pastel Fixative, which I have a full review on my channel. Uh, so I'll link that up if you guys are interested. And I allowed that to dry thoroughly. Now I'm gonna come in with this dark red pastel pencil. If you're a beginner and you don't have pastel pencils, go ahead and use a color pencil. That'll be absolutely fine. It will work in a pinch. Um, so I'm gonna use that to put in my veins now on the leaf. Now, you will want these veins to line up to the points, okay? So this kind of matters. Not every detail you have to put in, but the details that you do choose to put in should be accurate. Oh, I just broke that pencil. Okay. So I'm putting them in, I'm lining them up to the points, like so. And you can see I'm just kind of, in some places, because it's not pastel matte, so it's not going to take as many layers as pastel matte, but in some places I'm almost just sort of cutting through the layers and leaving kind of a finer line, and that's okay too. See that? Just like that. Now I don't wanna overdo this and put in too many lines. Just a couple. Just a couple there. And let's see. I really want to sharpen this now because I broke the point, so hold on. All right, same thing with this leaf. I want to make sure that all the points line up to one another with these lines. 
I'm using the same red pencil. Like so. Okay, I'm gonna tap that just one second. I'm gonna get that dust out of my way. And then I'm gonna take the yellow pencil and I'm gonna put some of that right down the line next to it on the sleeve. See that? So that in the more red areas, it'll stick out more. And Put a couple of more of the little veins in. But again, I'm not trying to overdo it. And that really wraps up today's tutorial. I wanted to thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave me some comments because I'd always love to hear from you and it really helps out my channel. It tells YouTube that you like these videos and that you would like to see more of them and you'd like to keep them coming. So as always, have a great day and I will see you guys in the next one. I love you guys. Bye!